All right, hey everybody, and welcome to the 90 Minute Art Challenge with me, Bobby Chu, hey. and Masei Seki. Hello, hello. Yeah, so today We're back. we have an awesome subject. This is going to be wonderful. It's a little dog, it's a little Frenchy, French bulldog. So cute. That's going to be great. And uh, before we go on any further, for those that want to participate okay first let me know where you're from i'd love to give you a shout out also while you're doing that i'll explain how to participate so you can go to let's see here 90 minute art challenge if you look up 90 minute art challenge on tumblr you can see what the next one is this one's for monday every tuesday mm -hmm. every monday and thursday we'll be streaming and the next one is going to be with the one and only the incredible jonathan hardesty will be joining yes. us as well. yeah we're going to bring in that's guest a great artists. artist mm -hmm. oh, ninja ninja lovers <laughs> uh this is today's topic a cute little puppy dog uh you can go to again tumblr and search for 90 minute art challenge on tumblr and you can find each of the topics and that's actually a good kind of segue to go into um, how to perhaps get your stuff seen on the stream. So you can hashtag it, 90 Minute Art Challenge. Currently, hashtags are unavailable. Um, I think they are concerned that I will spread false images relating to the 90 minute art challenge <laughs> uh, whatever they're watching so, you <laughs> yeah the other way that you can do this is you know a lot of people they tagged me they mm -hmm. tagged me on um on their entries so here's a few that i'll go through the art of doyle this one wow yeah i've ever seen that that tough. was awful very tough so and good. There's no pressure sensitivity. Did you notice that, Masse? Yeah, yeah, and it's like just a just a circle brush. Very, it's very awesome. difficult. Very difficult. Erwin, awesome. Mm hmm And then we have Matthew over here, completely different stuff. Yeah, I love that one. Right on. Imagination's awesome. Big shouts out to everybody there. And uh, this is how we're starting. I'll, I'll kind of like rewind a touch just to show everybody how we kind of started there. You started first. You did the first <laughs> march, right? It's like, got a head start. Yeah, you went into color very quickly and then muted the color a bunch with some more pastel-y colors. Yeah, I tried to get um, more of the subtle color differences in that like within that value range, um, just to, you know, add a bit more like life or like just my own touch to it. But wow. uh, this, one, this one was a challenging one because um, the dog itself was like all one tone, but they're like subtle um, value shifts and like hue shifts. So. Mm. But was it challenging? I think it's time <laughs> yeah. to ask, gotta ask the wizard bunny. <laughs> My natural bunny instincts gravitate towards cute things. I give it a difficulty of seven. Awesome, a seven. All right, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Yeah. He definitely is. Right on. So. Yeah, this was difficult because you're not just dealing with the head, you're dealing with the body, you're dealing with uh, tones that are very close together, like you're saying. Mm -hmm. When you're getting into the back of the puppy, notice how close those tones are to the background. And it's kind of nice when you have them fade in. Um, mm -hmm. And the other thing I want to mention, a couple little housekeeping things, what program is this? Because Masei and I are actually painting and drawing together live at the exact mm -hmm. same time, we can see each other painting, uh, which is fantastic. And you can do this by going to magmastudio.io and there you can paint and draw for free with your friends mm -hmm. up to 30 people at the same time. Also, I just wanted to mention, we see a whole bunch of custom brushes on the side there. You do not because those are um, prototypes. 
that we will be releasing hopefully next week. I'm thinking, Ooh, yeah, we'll I'm hearing next week is going to be the, the day or the week uh, when people can start to uh, subscribe to the pro version um, and get a bunch of features, including custom brushes. And of course, the, this all really, really helps us to keep the software uh, with the free version and still be able to constantly develop the software more and more. It's very much mm -hmm. geared towards collaboration, towards painting and yeah. drawing with each other. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is go ahead and follow us on Instagram. You can see the little uh, names there, Bobby, uh, Digital Bobber, and then over there, Masei Seki. Awesome. And then um, what's the other thing here? We want to mention Slido. Mm -hmm. Ask all your questions there. Yes. We try to get to most of them. Slido.com, hashtag choose stream. There's already a bunch of questions in there and you could upvote questions as well. And you don't have to log in. You don't have to sign in for an account. Uh, you can do them anonymously as well, which I like. And mm -hmm. here's an awesome thing. The Discord channel. Let's go to the Discord channel. And actually, why don't we just um, go from Zoom into Discord right now. Is that cool? Okay. Yep, yeah, that sounds good. All I'll right. be right there. All right, and we also have the Discord channel here. Uh, this is, you can get to this. We made a bit.ly uh, link there, bit.ly, uh, hashtag LBX Discord to join the Discord uh, server. And here is where you can do um, painting sessions. So let's go straight into a couple of these. Right, and everybody's hanging out, and you can come and hang out and draw with everybody. You can see that Patricia, our our fearless leader in Discord here, has <laughs> set up um, a little drawing board for people to draw. And Discord. or you could do your own. server, and here, all right, is where you can. Uh, do... Who's that? Is that Joe Allison or something? I don't know, but make sure that you're on mute uh, or. You can mute YouTube if you're in Discord. All right. Yeah, and I also wanted to add, uh, if you want to uh, grab like a magma board and draw with us, you can do it in LBX live share links and you can pick up oh, a magma right here. board. Yeah, <laughs> LBX live share links. So you can go in here, just like Patricia was saying, and you could click on the link there and join them. All right, let's go back to the painting here because I'm sure it's um, really motoring along. Oh, I guess not. We did a little bit of grass. <laughs> and now you're making your first marks. Yeah. The head of I... this puppy, right? Yeah. It's interesting. It's difficult mm -hmm. because Frenchies have a very flat face, but then also right. babies have a very round face, right? Round head. And you want to have a bit of both. Yeah, and there's like also the wrinkles and the folds, um, which I love about Frenchies because, you know, we have a studio dog that your brother, the Frenchie that your brother owns. But um, I think for this one, the most challenging part, which I didn't realize when I chose this photo, was the lighting is very, um, it's it's a very light, not like a strong casted uh, shadow lighting. Sorry, that was yeah. worded terribly, but um, it's yeah, overcast. so like it's a little overcast. Yeah, a little overcast. So um, figuring out the form was um, a bit of a challenge for me for this one. Well, also, it seems like you're starting off with slightly of a different idea, like you're almost doing like a slightly stylized version. Mm, mm hmm. Yeah. Was that your intention in the beginning? Um. I don't think so. I think uh, because whenever I draw French Bulldogs, I do tend to make it a bit more cute, cartoony. Uh, so it, I was probably straying away from the realistic look. But I think later on, I did try to go back to it, like nudging things here and there. I got to say that uh, your, your 
color picking I've noticed has increased like uh, your ability to color pick has increased very noticeably uh, in the last little while. Thank you. How did that come about? <laughs> um, well, first, uh, I guess it was a couple months ago in the summertime, um, I started to go plein air painting with um, some friends and then actually using gouache paint, like traditional paint, has made me more aware of like what colors need to be mixed together. And especially the whole idea of like, um, not just adding a specific color, but making it more red or like more blue, more cooler, more warmer, desaturated, just thinking all of that before actually putting it onto the canvas. It's like, it's given me a different perspective. And then obviously these uh, weekly studies um, have been helping me to kind of like reinforce that. So are you saying uh, that you, sorry, are you saying that you kind of like half observe what color is that that I'm seeing? And then half of it is kind of like you're analyzing uh, the relationships of the colors that you already put down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like just thinking of um, the relationship is like the biggest part where uh, it's been helping me with the uh, color picking. Right, so it's not a straight kind of like, I see a tone, I'm going to try to copy that tone yeah. and put it in the same place. Right. And yeah. That's, that's where all the secret sauce really is so yeah. <laughs> making the connection like, uh, OK, now I put this down. Now I need a little bit of this yellow that looks more like a yellow ochre. I'm going to mix a touch mm -hmm. in there and so on and so forth. Got it. Yeah. And I think um, using the magma program has because it's a different like I don't normally use that color wheel. Mm -hmm. um, Neither do just, I. Yeah, so it's like um, it's made me think in a different way as well. So it's really cool not being set in one way and just challenging yourself to learn something new. And then, you know, that also adds to your whole like library of uh, skill set and knowledge. And also uh, Discord people, um, you know, feel, feel free to join in the conversation here. But I, I do feel like this magma board has been really great because sometimes I kind of like I wait a little bit and I see how, how you're gonna start or how you're gonna <laughs> do something and I'll be like thinking do I want to do it that way you know and it gives me some options which is really yeah. nice um, yeah like for example when I was when I was watching your sketch I was I was initially thinking to do a tight like a tighter sketch like that but after seeing mm. you do that, I actually changed my mind. Mm. Yeah, because I was like, wow, that's a lot of commitment because those lines, well, you know, as you know, I'll just explain it to the audience. If you have a very, if you have very distinct lines, what you're saying is that that is exactly where that stuff is, right? If you have more vague lines, if you have more kind of simplified lines, then you're saying this is approximately where it is. Maybe this is the average height of the thing, but because it has all these ups and downs uh, in the actual thing that you're painting, you might have represented with a straight line. Uh, the audience knows that this is approximately where this thing would be, not exactly. Yeah. Right. So my when I saw you do those, I was like, oh, wow, she's committing to a lot. I don't want to commit to as much. So then I started making <laughs> my lines way more simplified. Yeah, yeah, I did notice. I did notice um, that you were doing a lot of big strokes, non-committed, and I was thinking, like, should I go back? I'm already like pretty deep into the the, the drawing and the painting, so I kind of just stuck with it. And yeah, look at your shape. I think your shape is so clear. You know, it's so very, yeah. very clear. Yeah, could work. and like, mm -hmm. so I um, in the future future paintings that you know we're gonna do for our future streams. Um, I did take your approach and applied it to mine. So, you know, I get to steal a few things from you too. It's <laughs> awesome. Hey, uh, Discord <laughs> people, you know, when you guys paint together, do you kind of find the same thing? Hello? 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll come back, I guess. All right. Yeah. Is somebody I'm... there? Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> yes, I, I am always seeing what other people do. And I and I compare myself in a good way. Mm. <laughs> and then way. if I yeah, in a, yeah. <laughs> And if I see something that, huh? Sorry. Oh, no problem. I hear something. Yeah, it can get a little, you know, tricky to talk in Discord just because there's so many of us. But we'll just do our best not to cut each other off and to give us all space to say their thing. Yeah. But that's Wait. good that you're... I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. No, no, that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's awesome. Wonderful. Well, um, yeah, why don't we go to some shout outs, by the way, because, you know, in the beginning of the stream, I was like, where's everybody from? And I always love to know. Um, so I could give them some shout outs. So big shout outs to, you know, we got India. Brazil, Houston, Germany, Chile, Colombia, Peru, C California, Czech, uh, Israel, New York, Turkey, everywhere. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, and let's go to a Slido question as well, and by the way. Oh, a little Texas uh, just came in. <laughs> Anu, Anu says, when you're in the worst emotional situation but have a deadline to finish uh how can you keep yourself drawing inspirational artwork mm, man have you ever been in those situations masse where you're just like not there emotionally at all oh yeah yeah many times when when you're just like oh i know i have to finish this but like my mind isn't there. My heart isn't there. It, it's tough. It's really tough. Um, oh, what do I do? Do Do you have an answer for that, or do you ever, are you ever in that situation? Uh, I must have been in that situation at least once. You know, <laughs> it's been a long time, but I think like for me, it's the maintenance that keeps me away from those kind of situations just always mm -hmm. having time for yourself like do you feel like do you feel like you have time for yourself each day or do you feel like each day is rushed let's say oh uh, i guess if i if i don't plan to make time for myself then i rush myself without realizing um yeah. i think just making time and being aware that like this is your you need this Will, will help yeah, yeah that's a good point um like going out for a walk or exercising reading a book it's like i, I there's times when i like put in my schedule to like read a book because i have to get away from my screen so that that has helped me a lot you probably noticed me say i put in my calendar uh fridays no appointments yeah yeah that's been really really nice because then i can actually mm -hmm. sit there and just think and a lot of times the best ideas are they come when you're not even thinking about them you're just sitting there you know watching the the grass grow and then all of a sudden you're thinking oh this would be an amazing idea for blah 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 and then you you know like that yeah. happens to me so much i thought of schoolism just staring off not really yeah. thinking about schoolism yeah. actually yeah, yeah and... I... oh go, go ahead. ahead i was huh. gonna say uh lightbox expo i i believe i thought of that um in the shower mm. yeah the shower is a great place to think of like crazy ideas yeah you know you're not gonna be working in the shower <laughs> you could just relax and let those ideas uh, yeah. kind of flood in yeah um i i do like the fact that you like actually put it in the calendar like that whole like no appointments because then that's also like a visual cue for yourself and a good reminder because i'm sure you have like 
50 different things going on in your head and in your schedule. So just, you know, past Bobby is telling your future Bobby self and like, hey, you need this. You like, this is good for you, you know? Oh, guaranteed. Oh my gosh. Like, and I'm the type to not want to sit still at all. So if I have free time, I, I always feel like I want to fill it instantly. You know, so having that block actually say no appointments, it's like my schedule is filled with no appointments, right? So, yeah. Whatever works, whatever works for whoever. Yeah. Um, uh, also, another thing for that, like, when it's hard to get through a deadline, um, I like to listen to, like, happy things that will make, you know, make it easier to get through it, like podcasts or, like, music that you really love um maybe not all the time because then you can associate bad thoughts with that certain type of music um but yeah something to kind of like help you get through it i was just thinking that yeah yeah <laughs> but it's specifically um seven habits of highly effective people is kind of like my go-to if i'm just like emotionally stressed or strained uh, I'll put on that book and just listen to uh, Stephen R. Covey for a while. And uh, he kind of puts things back into perspective. That's or whatever, good. you know. There's there's also certain songs that I'll put on. Mm. Get myself mm -hmm. jazzed, you know, back in yeah. Yeah. Sometimes if I'm sad, I want to listen to sad songs and get even more sad, you know. <laughs> it's great oh that helps wow i think i'm yeah i'm the opposite like I'm, i mean i will get super sad but then i think i'm just gonna stay in that sad yeah. spot for, for a long time yeah <laughs> so yeah it's totally different for everybody sometimes i like to just be there sad and just continue to paint and put on something really <laughs> sad <laughs> maybe, maybe it's good to just like let yourself be sad rather than like holding it in because you got to let that emotion out sometimes you know i i think it works for me because when i'm sad a lot of times or when i'm like feeling some sort of emotion that i don't want to feel i usually i have this thing where i'll just kick in and i'll observe myself feeling that way you know so it's like wow uh, I'm feeling very upset right now as if all these chemicals that I don't want in my head are just reproducing themselves like crazy. Like that's how mm. I'll kind of think. And I'll be like, wow. Yeah. yeah, so that's interesting. You know, like it's like as if my leg hurts. Oh, my brain is angry. It's not me. It's my brain. Or I'm sad. Uh, my brain is sad. You know, and I'll, <laughs> I just... I don't know. I'll think that way. I think there was a there was a certain book that I read all about that, like how your brain produces mm -hmm. all these chemicals and all this stuff, and it really kind of helps separate that animal emotional side from the conscious, more hopefully more evolved side of me. <laughs> I kind of like that. It's kind of just like not really blaming yourself completely but you know trying to understand yeah what is going on yeah like oh wow i feel really it's funny i feel very agitated right now that person is really agitating me <laughs> or whatever right it's like oh yeah it's because he just doesn't shut up or whatever you know yeah. like <laughs> and now i'll be like oh okay that's interesting yeah yeah that, that's that's good trying to see it from a different perspective mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah right. good question yeah why don't we go to um discord uh, if anybody wants to kind of chime in about anything or we could go to another question here you know i actually if we don't mind we could just stop right here and talk about the painting right now because yeah, sure. um, you see, your when you put down that bass tone, I thought your bass tone was actually the the darker side of the mm -hmm. dog. 
I think that's what also kind of allowed me to kind of get a little ahead at this point. You know what I mean? Because um, the the lighter tone in my dog is closer to the lighter tone in the reference than your lighter tone. Yeah. And it just creates more of a shape because of the contrast. Mm. And And, you know, by the way, everybody, there's been plenty of times where Masei totally kicks my butt. So uh, <laughs> no. I hope it's cool that I just kind of mentioned that. It's just something. No. Yeah, no, it's like I, then I yeah. learned like, oh, that's the reason why like this piece isn't working for me. So I learned from it as well. Yeah, um, I think I think the the base tone that I chose definitely a bit darker because um, I tend to do that make like the base very dark and then just try to like fix it as I go but that's with um photoshop adjustment layers where I can oh you know, yeah change things you could do that a lot easier yeah <laughs> well something else yeah. that I'm noticing with the the initial sketch here you know when you look at the reference and you look at the head part of the hard thing about painting the head is that you have this light part on the top of the head and then you have a little light part just underneath the ear just kind of like at the bottom of the jaw right there or like you yeah. know at the end of the jaw so you have these two light parts one at the top one's kind of like almost at the bottom which is odd when you think about it and then all of the face the head area is all kind of dark Right, so in my sketch, and you did the exact same thing, Masse, is that you emphasize the bottom face, you know, of that uh, head structure, right? Mm -hmm. The bottom panels that, that face downwards, you emphasize that, and uh, you didn't just kind of paint the face all dark, because that would lose the overall structure of it very, very quickly. Yeah. Right, and I'm doing the same thing. I didn't do any of that, um, any of that darker tone above the eye, really, above the eye mm -hmm. to the left. Right, I just left it mm -hmm. blank. So I want to create structure. Just a little observational yeah. thing. Yeah, I think uh, Frenchie's, the yeah, the whole head structure is just. It seems very straightforward, but then. It's easy to like uh, lose the structure once you uh, like start painting it. That's why it's nice to focus on the dark valley, darker valleys first, and then building on top of that, like the lighter ones later. Which I think both of us did um, for this painting. It's almost like a box ball, you know. It's like <laughs> right, like half box, half ball. The head. Yeah. One thing that I. One thing that I, this is going to sound so like, whatever, but I don't care. One thing that I was proud of myself for, you know, while painting this, are these light tones that I'm about to put in, especially towards the arm, because I'm, when I put down those loose marks, you can see that not only am I thinking about the structure, but I'm thinking about the overall uh, specularity the shininess of the fur. I, I'm pretty sure it's going to happen very soon. But um, when it does, you can kind of see it. Like, I'm not bringing those light tones to the top of the paw, the top of the, you know, the leg or whatever. Yeah. I think that part, I I had the, like, I had a trouble capturing, like, the whole specularity of the, the fur. Hmm. It is difficult because also this fur, it's like, what fur half the time? You know, you're looking, <laughs> you can't see the little strands of fur. Mm -hmm. right, which is also a challenge. Like, how do you represent fur like that so that it still feels like fur, but you're not doing the typical, you know, here's a couple strands here, here's a couple strands here. We both didn't do that. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, here's a little bit of a tougher kind of thing. How do you explain that, Masse? Why is it that that still feels like fur?
Is it where? <laughs> I don't know how. I'm sure you have like a a really good answer for that. I'm not sure either. I think it's like the um, where there's perhaps like things like um, cracks, folds, stuff like that. It's not going to be as defined, perhaps, which gives it a little bit of, of a fuzzy feeling. Just like if you're going to paint a sweater, right? Mm, sure. I think also um, for this, for our um, reference right here, like the, the part where on the, the arm, where there's that little fur that's sticking out, it's um, because it's a tiny bit furrier, it implies that like this dog has fur all over its body. Mm. So maybe there's that part. Maybe, yeah, we'll so see. Like little, little indications. We'll see, because the other challenging part about this one, which I love, is the fact that the fur is kind of shiny. And when you have dark fur that's shiny, it just totally messes up a lot of people, right? It's like, how do you, it's like you see you've seen a black horse, it looks gorgeous, and it's like, what is happening there? Uh, with the specularity and all that stuff, it can be very challenging and very, very cool. It's it's very easy to go too light on the light parts, which is but it's actually very dark compared to uh, yeah just yeah that's the other thing right it's like you know you know what the color of this dog is like the base color mm -hmm. it's hard for you to go into those lighter tones for a lot of people because they know well this is a black object or something right it's mm -hmm. like painting uh painting the white of the eye uh, you know on a portrait in the shadows and you're not using even close to white yeah it's like maybe like 20 percent darkness or 20 percent darkness it's just in the, the value range it's very very low i think um, uh that's when people should kind of think about um Oh, I just lost my thought there. I was going to say something about like, oh, oh, I remember. That's when, you know, you should think about what Masay and I were discussing in the beginning, where it's like, I was talking about Masay's color picking, and it was like she is observing, but also she's making sense of the color relationships that she had prior and to the current color that she's using now. So like using your logic going, Okay, yes, this is a white base color of this object or a black base color of this object, but because of the lighting situation, uh, theoretically, it should be like this. And then you slowly find mm -hmm. it, right? You find that middle tone. Yeah. Um, now, now that I'm looking at our painting, um, I do wish that, like, I kind of did your way where I put the patch of the white fur on the chest because then at least that would be like I'd be able to relate all my other colors that I'm choosing to that because that's probably one of the lightest tones on the the dog mm. so looking back I, I wish I established that so then I can like work around that also by the way I want to commend you Masse I want to let everybody know that I asked you um you know because we talked about this we talked about it a little bit in the in the stream you didn't actually like what you ended up doing too much yeah no <laughs> yeah at the end i messaged you saying like uh i don't think this is my best painting i don't really like it yeah. and then you were like do you want to do a new one and i'm like no i want to show people that this is the struggle that you know most artists have to go through they got to make some bad paintings but obviously learn from that and not just be upset. So yeah, I, I don't mind that <laughs> it didn't turn out the best or as good as I wanted to. And that's such a valuable lesson for everybody to kind of see that it's not gonna be amazing every time. And some of them I don't like either. Like I, I did a lot where I didn't like them. Um, but for you and I to show these things and for you to show you know, an exercise that you didn't particularly like. Uh, I think that's going to be more than valuable, since, especially because, you know, YouTube, what's all the videos full of? It's all full of 
edited stuff where it's like okay yeah everything i do is perfect look at me and uh, feel bad for yourself <laughs> yeah no this this is just raw like um nothing edited pure honest painting and yeah um, we can go to another question in Slido and then we'll hop over to Discord and um, see if anybody yeah. wants to have a little conversation there. Uh, Anonymous says, can a strong foundation make you learn faster rather than doing the cool stuff first like splash art or illustrations? Very nice. I think both have a lot of uh, value, but you are right. Like. I am under, I, I'm under the thought of, you know, doing foundational stuff just like this, this is foundational stuff, right? Um, it, there's so much value in that. There's so much value in that. And um, the people that generally like these kind of boring, quote unquote, boring kind of things, they generally are amazing artists. They generally end up being amazing artists because they just, they keep doing those fundamentals over and over and over again. And when it comes to like splash art or whatever, all of a sudden, boom, you know, they bring all of it into the forefront and that's what really separates them from everybody else. Um, what What is splash art? Is it kind of like, photo bashing oh no splash art is kind of it's more like posterized looking stuff like you, you seen um like alvin lee when he was at riot games that's i think that was the team he was in right it was the splash art team um, uh, okay. especially like with alvin he has all these like crazy perspective kind of things mm -hmm. right uh mm -hmm. it's very suited for splash art but yeah. at the same time it's like how can you get to that level if you're only doing fundamentals? I don't know. It might be very, very difficult, right? Because there's a whole nother aspect to um, like splash art that you, I feel like you kind of need to uh, paint and draw like your own stuff a bit more to get to that level. What do you think? Um, I think definitely a balance. Um, it's 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 hard because you don't want to just do fundamentals and you don't want to do just your illustrations. Yeah. Um, so I think it's like still produce your own stuff because obviously you have to like show your artwork. Um, but going back to fundamentals and then applying that to your new stuff probably is helpful. It's like um, peanut butter and jelly. Which one's better? Put them both, <laughs> you know? That's the best. Yeah. It's like the ratio might be different, but at least put the other one in. Ratio is a great key word there, Masay. Mm. So when you think about it, how much do you think would be the perfect ratio between studies and creative art, your own creative stuff? I kind of feel like I kind of feel like the um, your own creative stuff, if you can, should be less than your studies. Yeah, I I think that. But that's difficult because, like, when you when you're on a job, you're doing yeah. <laughs> creative stuff all day. Mm hmm. And then you want to come out with your own personal stuff at the same time. Um, I think the good thing about studies is like you're not very like you're not completely committed to it it's more like um for learning purposes um and like obviously you don't need to show all your studies uh, so i think if you like do many of them and be like okay with the mistakes like you know mine right here um then you can learn from that and then apply that to your own personal art and then like take more time with that rather than 
yeah. So it's like what you said, putting more time into studies than personal art might be good. But then Ooh. I feel like I, I switch back and forth where like I do so, like 80% studies and 20% personal. But then when I feel like I'm like, I've learned so much, then I kind of like shift the shift it to like less studies and more personal. So yeah, yeah. it's like back and forth. It's kind of like, um, you know, spring training and then you, you play the season and I don't mm -hmm. know where I'm going with that. But yeah, I feel you. Yeah, there's periods of time where like, I'm all about the studies, like right now. I'm so all actually right now I feel like I'm just like on fire like I just want to do everything I'm just so freaking inspired <laughs> it's been great yeah yeah oh, yours looking so good um does someone want to chime in from discord yep hey Kofi Hi. Oh, hey Kofi. <laughs> yeah I just wanted to add a little bit on top of what you guys are already saying yeah and I think like you can even take it a step further, right? Where you actually turn your studies into personal pieces. And how do I say this? Like, for example, maybe I see a very cool action pose of a martial artist, right? And she's a female, and I want to study that pose. I can basically turn that study around into a personal piece by drawing the pose and then mm -hmm. turning the. Sorry. I think somebody just didn't mute their mic there. Okay, okay. Let me go So, like, I can take that pose and turn it into probably a character, do fan out of a character like Chan Li. So, yeah. I'm studying the pose, but at the same time, I'm turning the study into something personal that I like. So, sometimes, and, and this is something I learned from you, Bobby. Like, sometimes you can try to make your studies fun, and it doesn't always have to be, like, just boring, uh, doing, like, a, you know, uh, value studies of the same subject, trying to get it one-to-one -one accuracy. Like, sometimes you can go a step further and turn it your studies into fun out of something. So that's how I also approach, like, studying. Yeah, like, the last, uh, the last challenge that we did on Thursday, uh, Masei, you were painting the snake and then I was painting just a random kind of imaginary thing uh, kind of riffing off of the snake photo mm -hmm. like the color the lighting but then you added your own personal yeah. and then there's another study that people will see later on I don't know when but um, where I'm struggling I'm still painting that that cityscape and you're you're already done and you're making like a giant uh, Godzilla kind of creature in the background and all sorts of stuff Godzilla yeah bunny creature or whatever yeah so yeah you, you could do a mix you could do, do many different versions so that was a really good point that Kofi brought mm -hmm. up yeah that's an awesome point make the studies fun can I have a really quick question? Yeah, sure. Sure. Do you like to listen to some podcasts or music while studying or trying to focus like deeply? Or would you rather have like quiet environment? I'm s I, I know not, I heard everybody, not everybody's like this, but I could totally listen to something totally instructional while painting something totally off that topic. So I, I love listening to uh, interesting, educational, motivational, inspirational kind of things. Um, I don't listen to music as much. What about you, Ms. A? Um Actually, before, before I answer, is this when you're doing studies or is this doing like regular painting stuff? Yeah, more like study, something you're really trying to focus real deeply and try to pay attention i think uh when it's like um when it's something i know i can paint without really needing to think about it then i'll listen to a podcast or like <laughs> yeah. um, like have a show running on the side but um for studies lately i i 
I actually just listen to music because I just really want to focus on like what what is what is it that I want to learn um, what's like what are things that I could take so that I can remember uh, so that's me personally I like to like I don't really listen to podcasts because then I'll either not pay attention to the podcast at all or just not pay attention to what I'm studying at all right yeah thank you you're no welcome. Problem. Yeah, something that um, <laughs> something that differs from K and I is like, I really do enjoy working in complete silence. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. that you know, you share room with, <laughs> with, with K, so you know, like that's not how she works. Uh, but yeah, I can yeah. go the whole entire day just zero, zero noise at all. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. My dad's like that too. Like he could go days without saying a thing. It's so funny. <laughs> I I've also tried that too, where I just um, work in complete silence. This is when um, like there's no one else in the room. I can like just have like peace and quiet. I it's crazy. It's like you get a lot done. Like just being in your own little space, your own environment. Absolutely, so, totally. Yeah. I can see why you're why you enjoy that. Also, I, I feel like a lot of really good ideas come in my head when there's just no distractions. Right? Even if I'm not trying to think of it, like they'll just pop in. So a lot of times I'll also keep a little uh, notepad open, you know, in my desktop, where I'll just write in notes as I'm thinking of them. Like, um, I wrote a bunch. You you want to hear just some random <laughs> little notes? I I think Let's it actually it might <laughs> help some people there. It might help some people. So uh, these notes, it's titled hashtag thoughts. Um. Yeah. So I wrote a couple. A couple notes that should help out the post going forward. Uh, engagement in the first 24 hours of a post are are the most important I just wrote that down you know make sure to answer everybody and have that engagement high especially for the first 24 hours of your post Um, the second thing I wrote down was perhaps no description question mark you know because I've noticed sometimes like there was a post that I did of this unicorn skeleton and it's like stuck in a tree, right? Mm-hmm. And where the horn is stuck, the tree has, there's flowers that have grown around it. Uh, yeah. I posted that image a while back, a long time ago, and I wrote a bunch of stuff and it did all right. Then I just posted it maybe like a month ago, no description, and it got way more traction. Right, because it was weird. Because I think is because it allowed people to interpret the image themselves, mm. right? And then they'd start to put into the comments like what they felt the interpretation was, or the questions that they might have had about the piece, because there's no description. Mm. Mm. Opening things up for a lot of, uh, you know, conversation. Mm. Yeah. And it's a- like. Uh, oh, is that somebody talking? Um, but I was just gonna say, uh, yeah, it's just like letting the viewer, the person, just think for the, like. Sorry, uh, it's kind of like the art talk that like, speaks for itself. Yeah, it's like what you're letting it do. It's kind of like putting a like duct taping a banana on the wall in this beautiful (laughs) you know gallery floor full of all these incredible you know paintings it just starts conversation right (laughs) that's interesting so that was a pretty good one i thought that was a pretty good one to write down um Mm -hmm. another one here is i was thinking this uh Stop putting hashtags in the post description. Instead, Mm. put them in a comment 
and comment on your post and put all those hashtags. Because once, currently you can't even search hashtags, but once that you know ban has been lifted, um, yeah, your post will still pop up, right? Even though the hashtag was not in the description of the post itself, it's in the comments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen some people do that. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, because I was, I was just like, if you put it in the description of your post, you're giving everybody all these reasons to exit from your post, exit from your account. Yeah. Right, because they could click on the hashtags. But you want mm -hmm. your post to still pick up when people are searching that hashtag. Anyhow, you get it. Everybody gets it. Yeah. <laughs> here's an, here's another one. Um, www.daysoftheyear.com and www.nationaltoday.com. I wrote these down. Because every day is a special day. It's not just mm -hmm. one special day, it's many special days. I think today is also like chicken soup day or something like that. <laughs> yeah, so if you, if you look up, and of course, hashtags are disabled, so I kind of can't do this right now, but when the ban is kind of lifted, you can look up uh, National Chicken Soup Day or whatever, hashtag, right? And then you see yeah. all these posts. Mm. so and it's not that many either and they're topical they're on point for that day there's a lot of activity on these posts that don't have a lot of posts yeah are these boring or is this like interesting to everybody i don't even know um but those two sites daysoftheyear.com and nationaltoday.com are sites that you can go to to find out what the special day is for today Um, sure, I see a lot of people um, posting stuff whenever it's that specific day. Yeah. And then um, and then there's like a small trend that goes on. Oh, yeah. totally. It's, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty cool to see that. I kind of discovered this when I, when somebody, I think somebody mentioned to me on one of my pen drawings. He was like, oh, yeah, a happy ballpoint pen day. Because I posted a ballpoint pen drawing a while back on that day there's a day yeah. <laughs> yeah that's so funny and then i found a hashtag for it and i was like huh i wonder what other days there are and there's yeah. like a billion days a billion different days so i'm gonna start doing that uh that's awesome when we could start using hashtags again yeah also there's a thing where people say if you put too many hashtags in your description algorithms don't like that have you heard of that no yeah I, they, did not know that. I don't know if it's true or not but that's what i heard so this hopefully will um, protect you from that because it's not in the description it's in a comment mm. yeah and the last one i put here is just like don't say tomorrow in a post. Time zones make it difficult to understand what tomorrow means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, with the algorithm, it's like you can't even tell like when the people post it because they don't show it in order anymore. Like the people that you follow. So annoying, by the way. Mm -hmm. That's so annoying. <laughs> Okay, I have to talk about our painting. Yours is looking so good. Oh. <laughs> Mine is this floating dog in this weird like space that doesn't have a grass. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. you don't have any grass yet. That's all. You don't have the yeah. shadows. <laughs> shadows really ground stuff, right? And then it does. my little feet there are not defined. So it kind of merges a little bit more with the ground that's mm -hmm. on. But and I like how um, your edges aren't like as crisp as mine. Yeah, I noticed that uh, the crispness yeah. of the edges. I, you know, and also, um, it's because there's almost like 
no middle ground uh with your with the edges between your the the puppy dog and everything else it's just a, mm -hmm. clean edges almost all the way through yeah i think um it was probably the mistake of keeping everything a hundred percent like the density and opacity and draw like painting in that the initial drawing and that's what kind of made it very uh too crisp and it looks like a sticker right now <laughs> but also also you know like um this is a very very legitimate and effective way of painting too i just you know i don't want to deter people from this kind of painting because there's definitely a place for that i feel like mm -hmm. uh i feel like this kind of painting is for when you have more time mm. you know what i mean because we're under time pressure 90 minutes to do a full-on uh you know photo reel as we can french yeah. bulldog that's not a lot of time at all mm -hmm. we did the best we can yeah, and there is also something about like uh blurry fuzzy uh, not super super defined things that kind of give way to a lot of forgiveness mm -hmm. right yeah like when you do traditional paintings, you don't need to go nearly as detailed for people to go, that's awesome, versus a digital painting. Yeah, that's, that is really true. Mm -hmm. Like when I do traditional stuff, <laughs> I'm not as careful or sorry, everything isn't as like defined and crisp. And then but then it like it totally works when it's all loose. So yeah. it's, it's just hard with digital. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Oh, hello. Bobby. Hi. Yes. Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Say something else. Do you know anything <laughs> else? All right. I guess uh, can work on the hellos. And... Want to say hi? Yeah, I'm just kidding, by the way. Um, all right. <clears throat> so, yeah. Can I ask a question? Oh, sure. I was trying to use uh, Magma Studio, uh -huh. and it kept messing up. Is it because it's on my phone? It, would I need to actually have a computer to do it better? No, you could use your phone as well. Uh, Magma is pretty awesome that way. You can literally use anything. What you want to make sure that you use, though, is not Safari. Okay, use Google Chrome. You would want to download the app for Google Chrome instead of using a default uh explorer or safari or any of those other browsers i'm actually using google chrome and it's like really lagging like really bad hey uh we because can help you like... okay we, we can help you on discord so they can move on like with a, a question and I, I can help you uh here so oh. we'll message you perfect thank you patricia I I also wanted to say, Naraya had like a very good question about schoolism. Sure. Naraya, you're here? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, perfect, actually. Oh, perfect. There we go. Um, so I've had a schoolism subscription for like four years. And just recently, I started working professionally. And I have to draw like seven, eight hours a day for my clients. And after I'm done with my work day, I'm tired. And my hand doesn't want to draw. But I still want to do schoolism things. So can I just like binge all the classes? And is it okay like not doing a lick of homework? Do you still think it's valuable to do that? I put them on constantly. And the, how I do it is I just let it play uh, as I'm painting and drawing and stuff. Um, there's going to be times where you totally zone out and then you, you're not paying attention and then you see the painting or whatever they're doing, it's like way further along. I just let it keep playing. Uh, because first of all, yeah, I don't wanna to put too much pressure on myself to make sure that I'm absorbing everything while doing my day job. And the second, mm -hmm. uh, you will find so many times that whatever they're talking about, it's like, oh wow, that actually relates exactly to what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna take that piece of info, I'm gonna do this and this, and so many more little light bulb moments start happening. Um, 
so that's how I uh, will tend to do it when I don't have time, you know, instead of, um, instead of listening to music or whatever, just cause I generally don't listen to that much music while I'm drawing and painting. I, I try to like double things up. Yeah. What about you, Miss A? Um, you know, I might actually try that, like listening to schools and classes that oh, are fantastic. related to exactly what I'm painting. Yeah. Because it's true. It's like you, you pick up little things here and there. And especially if you rewatch it, you pick up things that you might have listened to, but you didn't really remember. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's that's awesome. But um, hmm, what do I do? I think uh, I generally like to watch... Some, when I have the time, um, I kind of watch it just to like absorb. And then the second time I try to take notes of things that I, I want to remember. And then the third time I kind of just like run it in the background like you and then just like uh, let it play. Oh yeah, and th that's the other thing. I, I will, like I said before, I keep a little notepad document open uh, pretty much all day and I'll jot down important things or things I want to remember, things I hear, things that come up. Uh, and then, you know, twice, three times a week, I'll extrapolate the info and start to organize and put it into the proper places. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. If you could keep those kind of things up, then it's like, it's a constant move upwards. Um, and if you feel like man, this is a grind and every time I'm done my day, I don't feel like doing anything else. Uh, be a little, you know, be a little, pay attention to that big time. That's something that when I felt that, that's when I, I'm like, I need a change. Um, but then I don't know what situation you're in either because many of us, especially now, need to take on jobs that we might not even like. Um, yeah, so you want to try to keep that balance and um, sacred, you know? And how I do it is I, I give the best hours of the day to myself, get up super stinking early and, and not have any uh, agenda on my plate that's for somebody else everything is for me you know exercise read paint draw whatever I tend to uh, get up at around five and I'll start work at about nine so it gives mm -hmm. me plenty of time just to just chill out and yeah that's a tough one though it's it's not for everybody I mm -hmm. guess but it's kind of like, it's kind of like working out, you know, why would yeah. people want to work out in the mornings? You know, it's the same kind of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Great question though. Yeah, really awesome question. I think we got another question by Dan Robinett, if he's here. Oh, hey, do you want me to ask it out loud? Sure. Yeah. Type in the chat. Oh, Bobby. Hey, I'm a fan. <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask when the, or if you had any idea when the paid version of Magma would be released. Uh, my company's looking for a whiteboard, and I don't want them to buy some other brand because I really like Magma personally. Oh yeah, um, it, it will be released next week. But also, if your, if your studio wants something totally secure we can also do a studio version where we help you install it onto your servers so that all the files are not just on the internet somewhere. Oh, that's cool. Is there somebody I could message on Discord to get more info on that? Oh, totally. You can message me. I'll, I'll send you in the right direction. Oh, sweet. Thanks. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because a lot of studios, of course, they don't want they want to be able to interact and work like this, but they don't want their files to be accessible out there. Mm -hmm. Just anybody. to anyone. Yeah. That's true. Um, 
Yeah, there's a bunch of questions. Shall we try to go through a bunch of these questions here? Uh, yeah. yeah. Nina says, how long should you study a certain topic or a certain artist for? I think that that's, there's mm -hmm. no concrete answer for that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's make sure you, you learn something before you move on. I think that's the main thing. That's the, that's mm -hmm. the, that's the true pandemic that has been kind of going, uh, spreading to all the different artists out there where it's like, you learn something a little bit, you watch a video a little bit, you kind of learn it and then you move on. Like, don't do that. Don't do that. Um, it's all art. Learn it till you're at least somewhat good at it. Hopefully you learn it till you feel like you're, employable doing that then move on mm -hmm. to something else you'll, you'll find so many connections between one thing you learn and the other thing that you learn creating a completely new thing mm -hmm. i think um from personal experience i i've done that before where i like i learn i try to study an artist and then i look the other way and i'm like oh there's a new one and then i start chasing them um i think that happens because you don't really I mean, I'm not going to say an exact uh, amount of time, but it's probably good to set a time period to just like, just focus on that. It's like, whether you want it to be a few days or a week, or uh, I'm not sure about a month, but um, just setting that those days and commit to that will probably help because it's just so easy to look at all the pretty, like other, you know, pretty uh, art and want to study them, but to just like, hone down on that one thing and schedule it uh, will probably keep you focused. Great advice. You know, it's funny because the head of my French bulldog actually looks more like our company, you know, our studio <laughs> dog more than the reference. Don't you I think? was thinking that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Magnus, our French bulldog, our studio French bulldog looks like him but like maybe a relative or a sibling <laughs> and it's actually really funny too because like so many times when i see our paintings it's like if you mm -hmm. took if you took like half of mine and half of yours and made like the middle point it, mm -hmm. it really becomes way closer to the reference <laughs> that's true yeah. We should probably get one of those apps that merge paintings together. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go to another question here. So Gemma says, I've just started rendering. For now, no saturation. The main problem, there are too many brushes. How may I choose between? Waste lots of time before starting. That's such a good question here. This is done pretty mm -hmm. much with one brush for me um you know have a textured kind of brush if you can but really all you need is a default brush um which is why mm -hmm. uh, like studying in magma has been so much more beneficial for me because i don't mm -hmm. have all those bells and whistles that i'm so used to um with something like photoshop mm -hmm. yeah and then because of that like how's that going to help if you don't have all your bells and whistles well it it helps because that means that i'm picking colors that are far more accurate tones that are far more accurate uh drawing things down with far more accuracy because i know i can't warp them i can't do all of these little subtle adjustments like i do in photoshop so when i'm going back to photoshop now uh the colors that I pick and put down are way more accurate again, and I don't need to adjust as much either. Painting faster mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. before, Masse, like, you know, both you and I, we were quite kind of influenced by uh, Daisutumi and Robert Kondo and the uh, painting with light and color in the Tonko House yeah. uh, class. And so we would yeah. paint everything like overcast it doesn't matter if it was nighttime even i would just paint it overcast and then i would yeah. adjust uh-huh uh yeah 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 
So this is way better, I feel, like to, uh, to be able to relate what I'm doing now to everything else that I want to do, especially like traditional painting. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess for Hello. the brushes, oh. Hello again. Hello. Hi. hi. Yeah, hi. Uh, Bobby, this is Koshik from India. Hi. Hello. Hi. Uh, it's nice to meet you. I mean, uh, on the previous day, I also tried to connect you, but uh, I was not familiar with Discord uh, oh, no live problem. chat. So mm. it, didn't, it didn't happen. So it's finally. Well, it's, it's wonderful to you know, have you on the stream and you found your way? Yeah, yeah, I just uh, finally did it right now. <laughs> uh, uh, so I have a question. Can I ask uh, right now? Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I am looking uh, for job opportunities on art industry. So uh, I just uh, curious about my artworks uh, I want to really review I um, want to get a review from you from my art station page so uh, is it possible right now after uh, if I, I share you can you check it or tell me where the things I have to work on more I mean I have to work on uh, those things and which, got it. Uh, I got it. Uh, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. So, uh, you sure <laughs> I'll put it on screen. All right. Here okay, we okay. go. Uh, that would be... So where's your, so, uh, should I put it? Uh, yeah. Where do I find the link? Uh, where should I, uh, send it to you? Yeah. You could put it into the LBX, uh, live share links. Um, live share links. Okay. Yes. So, uh, and, okay. And just like, just like, uh, when you're ordering food, how real do you want How spicy do you want your critique? Uh, uh, the twist spicy, the worst I mean, spicy. Uh, I, I love it. I want to. I want to review myself as a twist. Uh, I mean, uh, how in the arts art pers perspective? I totally uh, get it. Put in your link. Let's go. Let's do this. Okay. This is, and then I gotta go. Uh, I think. Okay. Or wait, wait. No, we still have uh, uh, fifteen minutes. Okay, I see your link. We're gonna put this on screen, and you are not gonna hate me for anything that I say. You promise? No, 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 no. I. <laughs> I, uh, I have no intention like this. <laughs> okay, it's all genuine, genuine uh, place of love and affection. Okay, we are going to give this person okay. Kushik. Is that that's what, okay? That's what I am. Want. Fantastic. <laughs> We're going to give you a nice, uh, very genuine critique here. All right, Kushik. Yeah. It's, a yeah. neat, it's a neat uh, header, first of all. It's a neat header. But sorry, sorry. I was going to say it's a it's an interesting header here, banner image. Okay. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's a banner of. Uh, a, uh, oh, it's all good. Um, let me just let me just keep talking here. I'm gonna because I don't want to take up too much time with this, but I want to also give you as much information as I can. Okay. So the very first thing here okay. is when I'm looking at this, I look mm -hmm. at the banner, and say. I'm just going to go hot and heavy on this. So you jump in, you yell, whatever you cut in, uh, if you want to say anything. But for yeah. me, it's like, I look at this banner, I'm going, this person likes to be in sci-fi. Then I look at any other image. I'm like, no, he doesn't. He doesn't want to be in sci-fi at all. He wants to paint. No, no, I first. want to, I want to. I, I totally uh, understand. I totally understand uh, what you're saying here, but you got to listen to me yeah. for a second here. Yeah. When I, yeah, sure, sure, sure. I'm looking at this as an employer and I'm going, this person mm -hmm. wants to be in sci-fi. Then I look at your portfolio and then I go, no, he doesn't. Right. So in other words, make sure <laughs> that what you have in your portfolio reflects the things that you want to do. 
unless your portfolio is not trying to get jobs. Okay, but if it is trying to get jobs, you should definitely make sure that it is exactly what you want to do. Um, and then when I'm looking at this, there's some issues here. Okay, you have this robot guy, you got these little guys, you got this big thing here. You notice that these little people down here, um, let me try to, let me try to raise it up a little bit here, right? You see these tiny little people there, uh, they actually have atmosphere. You look at the darkest tone on them, right? You look at the darkest tone on mm -hmm. them and it's not that dark, mm. right? And then you look mm. at the darkest tone on your ship and it's quite dark. Mm. Which one feels closer to us? The ship feels closer to us. The robot, the giant robot mm. thing feels closer to us because these guys mm. have less value range than this thing. Why would that be? It doesn't totally make sense to me. The other thing is, you can see the shadow. This shadow mm. is going towards the bottom uh, left, right? You can see a slight little indication of shadow. Uh, however, where's the sun? The sun is towards the left, which makes the shadow makes no sense. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then we have this shadow under the robot, which is very dark on snow, mm -hmm. right? This light is going to bounce okay. and it's going to hit this robot, which is a reflective, somewhat reflective thing, which should make a less mm -hmm. dark shadow, I would think. Um, mm -hmm. Right? There's no atmosphere going into the background, into the distance when there's atmosphere on these, uh, these little explorers here. So altogether, yeah. it's like there's bits of cool stuff here, but it mm -hmm. doesn't really work all together, I don't think, okay. and for those reasons. Like they don't all kind of work together to create a piece, right? Um, yeah. Mm. But hey, you're on your way, and the main thing is, is that you keep going. It's like a pinball okay. machine. You're not going to get a direct way to the top. You're going to bounce all over the place. You're going to go down a bit before you go up. And then when you got up, you go back down again. And you keep bouncing around until you get up there. You just got to keep going. Okay. 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 So, or, uh, and I, uh, I mean, I, want, uh, I just uh, want you to know that I am not a uh, certified artist. I... I'm a self self taught artist, so I have done inspired by uh, you, Craig Mullin sir, and uh, some other sirs. Uh, I mean, it's a lot many ideal. It's too many ideal for me. Uh, you are one of them, and also it's. Uh, I mean, what did I say? Uh, well, I, I get it. I get uh, it. I get it. Kushik. I didn't get any degree Kushik? in art from any university. Okay, Kushik, hold on. <laughs> I understand. Sure, sure. And, um, sure. you know, like, the thing is, yeah. are you certified, Masse? I'm not certified. I don't remember being certified. You know what I mean? So certified is all in your heart. Okay. There's a point in, where you just go, okay, yeah, I'm professional. Whatever. In India, a certificate is must. I mean, in India, they require certificate first. Then your works will... Uh, we uh, verified or uh, the, the other things will uh, verified and later. But okay, that you, you know that's cool and everything. But um, mm -hmm. it, I'm not certified, and I, you know, like you don't need to be certified to work for a company in Europe, a company in the U.S., the company wherever. It can help. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have like a degree or something like that, but you don't, you don't absolutely need it, uh, especially if you're not planning on moving there. If you just wanted to get some freelance work and you want to work on some cool projects, you don't need to be certified at all. We have to get away from that. You know, who is this great, amazing person or committee that deems you to be professional? 
deems you to be certified good enough to be an artist you know like screw that person who is that person right <laughs> yeah you know uh, uh, one thing i want to ask more that uh, can i ask a uh, question something about schoolism sure yeah uh, so uh, i want to uh, take classes from schoolism but uh, the problem is i am from india so how can the uh, payment methods and all the things will i mean i oh that kind of stuff you no could idea. just ask help desk okay you could you can just email uh, info@schoolism.com and they'll help you right out uh, we have lots okay. of okay. yeah you know, we have lots of people from india studying on schoolism so there's mm -hmm. definitely ways no yeah. matter what mm -hmm. info at the rate schoolism was that sorry info at the rate schoolism what did you say i mean what uh, did you uh, ask me to mail okay the email is info at schoolism um yeah dot that's com. it we, we will help you uh, info at schoolism.com no worries <laughs> <laughs> Great. thank you ma'am thank you you're very Bobby. welcome you're very welcome awesome well shoot this uh this painting is progressing quite a bit now hey look yeah. you got shadows instantly i just want to mention this instantly things are merging together on your on your side all that stuff that you're talking about before right yeah <laughs> i finally put it in that must have felt good to put in that shadow mhm mm mhm mm yeah i think um I, I I think looking at it, I'm just like, oh no, I'm say like add that part, add this part, but um, because it's like a step by step, a whole progression for the painting, um, I think I'm glad that I did, I was patient with that and did you know took the steps that I needed to. Yeah, and you know what, there is something to be said about um, resisting to do something because it's not in the right order yet, or it's not the right timing, mm -hmm. right? Like, I remember in the beginning when I was first starting to paint, it's like you want to put in that highlight right away. Yeah. Right, on anything. <laughs> uh huh. Like something shiny, I want to put that highlight on there. Uh, but when you do that, it was harder for me to make a good painting. True. It's like it's like when you make a cake, you don't want to just put the the cherries already because you're gonna have to like put the icing and work oh. around it. And <laughs> it's like, why did I do this to myself? <laughs> That's funny. That's a great analogy. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, sometimes for these kind of these kind of exercises as well, it's like you don't want to wait too long though. Right. Mm -hmm. There's there's mm -hmm. like a time limit on this. So this has actually like I'm fine with resisting. Right. And like, OK, I'll paint everything else and then I'll get to these last and that'll be like the cherry on top and it'll be great. Yeah. But um, there's also something to be said about when I'm doing this exercise. It's like, oh, this part, I need to make that that ear a warm tone now. You know, like, I need to do that before this, uh, the time is up. Mm. Now, now I'm finding myself just going to that before I do, like, a full pass of, like, a certain color that I'm going to use. Right? I'll stop halfway through, and then I'll do that thing that I notice, and I'll come back, not really being as concerned about using the exact same color. Mm. It's... Is it kind of like as if you're taking notes for yourself on the painting? Uh, no, I'm, yeah. you know what? I think the biggest thing is just like before I would pick a tone. I, you know, I get a tone and I'd start applying it everywhere where I felt that tone needed to be before I moved on to another tone. Ah, uh, I see, I see. Right. And, and now I'm like, yeah. why do I need to use that exact same tone? Who cares you know let's just go do this other thing come back do something that looks about right and then mm -hmm. keep moving on yeah 
so these exercises have helped me with that you know it's helped me kind mm -hmm. of uh be a little bit more loose a little bit more free mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not be so kind of procedure uh mm -hmm. you know i guess that's the thing about the studies is you, you can really experiment and feel like free yourself from these certain restrictions mm. you know i i I just remembered a thought I had when I was when I asked you, "Hey, do you want to do the painting over?" You know, um, I was thinking in my head when you said, "No, it's all good. I'll just you know I'll just show this painting I don't like or the study I don't like." Uh, in my head, I was like, "Oh, awesome! I kind of liked my painting." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, at the same time, I was like, uh, I can't let Bobby like redo this like really good painting. He's just, and then in, in the back of my mind, I'm like, he's just going to make it even better. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, for sure. I mean, yours turned out great. So, you know, I didn't, I think like as is, is, is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was willing to, I was willing to. Yeah, you're too nice to ask me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's another question from Anonymous. Yes. How can I deal with a burnout? I want to keep drawing, but I just don't feel like it anymore. Well, shoot. Uh, let's just answer this one real quick. Do these exercises with us. You don't have to think mm -hmm. about what you have to draw, and you're just drawing it. Yeah, that is, it's, it frees you from like making certain decisions. So. <laughs> Doesn't this pose of the pug resemble a penguin to you? That's another question. <laughs> That's kind of why I really love this uh, subject. By the way, big shouts out to Tom underscore Kings underscore Kennel. This is from their photo. If you love Frenchies, if you love French Bulldogs, that's totally the account for you, by the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are so many absolutely just so cute uh, French bulldogs on that thing. Yeah, it's awesome. it so cute. Yeah, so um, penguin. Yeah, looks like kind of, yeah, reminds me of a penguin, mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. Especially the, the colors and the tone. And also the pose. Yeah. Um, CJ Hi, Russo. Bobby. Oh, yes. Hello. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Hi. I'm Paulo. I'm from Colombia. Hi, Paulo. Uh, I'm just had a quick question. Um, maybe two. <laughs> the first one do uh, you know where is going to be the winter sale? I really want to take those. Ah, the winter sale. Yes, we don't usually say that. Um, when, I'm sorry. No, don't worry. No worries. <laughs> on schoolism, but um, I can't say that. You know, Black Friday is a pretty good day. So I don't know, awesome. Maybe. <laughs> All right. Did you have? You had another question? Yeah. The another one is the when. I'm sorry. No problem. When, when I when I took first um, schooling classes, I took the the Jamila Nov class. Uh huh. That is quite difficult for me to know when to move on to the next class because I think that I don't really understand the first one and I try and try and try several times, but it's difficult to me when to take the another class. So I don't know. I also check the feedbacks, but I'm not pretty sure when to move on to the next class. Can you please give me in the right direction? Um. I think what you did is good. You know, you didn't just stop and then move on. But there is going to be a point where, you know, you just ask yourself, did I put in the effort to understand this? Yeah, I feel like I did. Okay, well, I still don't understand. I'm going to move on to another thing. Maybe I come back to this. That's happened lots of times for me as well. Um, especially with Craig Mullins class, like there's so many parts in his class where like I came back to it like months later and I was like, oh shoot, yeah, when he said that, now it makes far more sense or whatever. 
there's so many more layers to what he says because everything he says is so condensed into like mm -hmm. such a simplified statement um mm -hmm. yeah and nathan Fowkes's class is another one that i felt like when i came back to it a couple of times later i understood it way Can you more. To that? yeah, yeah. I, I think that yeah. especially correct molly's feedbacks he's all over the place i mm. <laughs> i didn't understand i have to stop that one and took the the jamil enough because he's all over the place on hello all right i'm gonna put i think scarlet needs to go on mute i'm not sure if that's scarlet so i apologize if it, if it wasn't i think it was i, okay. I will message you uh, <clears throat> so i i really like the part where you're saying like you know after three a few months you like you go back to it i think during that like few months where you took a break from for example craig's class um if you're learning from other classes then it's like you're like whatever you learn in that and when you listen to Craig's stuff, it makes a lot more sense. So that at least that's what's happened for me. Um, so I think it's important to kind of like learn other things because that kind of like, you know, stacks on top of the other things that other instructors say. Um, so yeah, Craig, especially right. he, he has a lot of condensed knowledge into like a short <laughs> amount of time. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Thank you so much, Bobby. Thank you so much. Missy. Oh, you're our well. pleasure. Yeah, you're very welcome. Uh, this is a funny one from CJ Russoto. He says, I haven't been on streams for a while. I'm curious, who or what is that wizard thing you're doing? <laughs> the wizard. Yes, the bunny wizard. We go to him mm -hmm. to, to see what the bunny wizard feels is the difficulty of each challenge. Yeah, he's the wise wizard. Almighty and wise. Hopefully one day we will get to bunny wizard <laughs> level. Mm -hmm. uh, Storm's Legacy asks, I do figures, but when painting, uh, but when painting, find my poses look too artsy. Oh, okay. When this person paints the figures, they find that the poses tend to look too artsy. I draw people in coffee shops too, but what are other ways to get neutral poses with clothing? Neutral poses with clothing. Okay. You know, natural poses? Oh, sorry, natural, yes. <laughs> Dyslexic. <laughs> uh, I think, I, I don't know, but I have a sneaking suspicion, Masay, that Storm's legacy here is exaggerating the poses too much, you know, because like, you know, when you're in school and the teacher goes, all right, push that pose, you got to push that pose. And some people like myself, when I first heard that, I was like, what are you, okay, I got to push this pose, uh, you know, and like start doing this stuff where it looks like the guy's breaking his back. <laughs> yeah um, maybe oh go ahead it's it i guess it becomes a bit less um observational and more of like the feel that like you know how like they make like art teachers make you make the pose feel like it's like that more like you know breaking the back like you just said um so maybe observation is more yeah key. dial down that exaggeration i feel like you know, instead of pushing it, uh, you know, some some poses are not meant to be really pushed that much, mm -hmm. right? It's just, it's like you want to push it like 10, 20%, not like 50, 70% or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but to find other ways to get natural poses with clothing. There's uh, TV shows, documentaries. Yes. YouTube videos. YouTube, I think most people are kind of like just their natural self and they're standing or like sitting in a certain position that kind of like with their personality. And then you can like pause that and draw that maybe. Um, that's one way. 
Anonymous asks, do you ever use 3D software to work out lighting of objects and shadows or stick to using reference images? Generally, no. I've done a couple, I've done like, yeah, I've done like literally like a couple paintings where I mocked something up in ZBrush first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think, I, I wish I knew how to, but I haven't learned the programs. Um, yeah, Kay and I were just yeah. talking about um, learning some Blender tomorrow. Ooh. Yeah. I, I could see it as like a very um, efficient way for uh, client work. Yeah, you know, the thing for me is just like, I just really like painting and drawing. I like the act of painting and drawing more than sculpting. And far mm. more, far more than, um, than posing action figures, which a lot of times that's what 3D programs feel to me uh, at mm -hmm. a point you know you make your model or whatever and then you're kind of like posing it like you're posing your little barbie dolls action figures uh in the playhouse yeah. and that's yeah. fun but it's not nearly as much fun for me as painting mm. i guess it's also like problem solving like you get to figure it out yourself yeah like there's some stuff where it's like you just i don't know you uh, I don't want to do it that way. <laughs> right? Like I just yeah, don't. I want perfect. I want to do it like mm -hmm. this. And some people might say, well, you know, that's not as effective. That's not as productive. Mm -hmm. Uh which maybe it might be true for certain positions um for certain people. But then there's another th part to this. Paintings to me they just feel so much more art it's all art mm -hmm. but paintings drawings they feel more like art to me and i feel like you know if you gave somebody say you gave whatever actor uh nicole kidman you gave her this this image and it looks photo real of her as whatever wonder woman Let's mm -hmm. just make up something versus a beautiful painting rendition of her mm -hmm. that looks like Sargent painted it, right? It looks like a painting of her mm -hmm. as Wonder Woman. Which one would connect more? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. If it's just a photo of her, if it looks like a photo of her, I don't. I would like to argue that many people would be way more attracted to the painting of her that looks, you know, very representational, like a sergeant mm. painting or something like that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. That's true. Anyhow, this painting. We are finished. Is done. Check this out. So let's pull that down. Boom. Finished painting. Yay. Yay, we did it. <laughs> yeah, that was a tough one. That was a tough one. All right, everybody. So thank you so much for everybody tuning in. I did want to mention that we will be streaming again, you know, every Monday and Thursday. So come paint with us. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Hey, you made it all the way through. Don't forget this channel and make sure you subscribe. And uh, for Discord, Discord's happening all the time and it'll be happening more and more. The Lightbox Expo Discord account. Uh, join, study, work hard, kick some butt, and we'll see you at the next stream. Thank you to the audience. Thank you to my amazing uh, team that has been helping with ushering many of the callers and everything thank you so much uh, thank you thank you to my wonderful assistant jamie in in the chat that's been helping everybody as well thank you, jamie and the biggest thank you goes to my wonderful co-host masse thank you so much for painting <laughs> with me and joining me thanks for having me and huge thanks obviously goes to you bobby for hosting this awesome challenge 
Oh, well, <laughs> right back at you, Masay. Uh, next week, Monday, it's going to be Masay and I with the one and only Jonathan Hardesty. Join us then. See you. See you, everybody. Bye. All right.